The Crown has been called out for stretching the truth, but one thing it didn't make up was the shocking erasure from history of two of the Queen's closest cousins. Nerissa and Catherine Bowes Lyon were born in 1919 and 1926, respectively, to John Herbert Bowes Lyon. He was the uncle of Queen Elizabeth II, making his two daughters her first cousins. In 1941, the daughters were ousted from their family home in Scotland and sent to the Royal Earlswood Mental Hospital in Surrey, spending the rest of their lives in the Victorian-era institution. At the time they were committed, they were 15 and 22 years old. For over a hundred years, Britain's mentally ill were hidden from society in vast Victorian asylums. Today, the medical field would term the sisters as developmentally disabled, but that wasn't the case in the 1940s. The official diagnosis at the time they were committed was to label them imbeciles, with notes that they were non-verbal and, depending on the source, had an estimated mental age of somewhere between three and six years old. Burke's peerage prides itself on being the who's who of royal families around the world. They've been putting family trees together for a few centuries, but the 1963 edition had what's best described as a whopping mistake, one dramatized in The Crown. Nerissa, it claimed, had died in 1940 and her sister had died in 1961, when a 1987 investigation by The Sun found that the sisters had been alive all along, editor Harold Brooks Baker said that they had based their information on what the family said, noting, If this is what the Bose Lyon family told us, then we would have included it in the book. It is not normal to doubt the word of members of the royal family. There it is in black and white. Both died long ago. How strange. In 2011, Channel 4 ran a documentary called The Queen's Hidden Cousins, which revealed there are some pretty gaping holes in what's known about the cousins, including what prompted the decision to commit them to the hospital after they had lived at home with their family for so many years. It also asked the question, who knew what and when? A 1987 Thames News report on the sisters and the Royal Earlswood Mental Hospital featured an interview with an administrator who described Catherine as having difficulty in understanding the world around her and being, quote, little more than a child. He added that the last family visit she had was in the 1960s, but after that, the only visitors the hospital reported were volunteers. Buckingham Palace's response to the story when it first broke in the 80s was to issue no real response at all, calling the sisters' institutionalization and premature death announcements an issue for the Bose Lion family. The only members of the family associated with Nerissa and Catherine to make a statement was their mother's granddaughter, Lady Elizabeth Anson. She suggested that they had been declared dead by mistake, saying that her grandmother tended to be careless when it came to filling out the paperwork. But those interviewed by the Thames suggested otherwise, saying that those kinds of mistakes just didn't happen, especially considering the information for their siblings had been correct. Annie Sulzberger is the lead researcher for The Crown, and on the show's official podcast, she spoke about the work that went into the episode featuring the Queen's Forgotten Cousins. She said that one of the first questions that occurred to her was one of the first ones that probably occurred to viewers when they learned about Catherine and Nerissa Bowes Lyon. How much did the real Elizabeth and Margaret know? So we know that they're, I mean, very close in age to Margaret and Elizabeth. It made you think instantly there must have been some understanding of each other that they existed in the world. Yes, I remember hearing about Catherine and Nerissa and their terrible problems. There were a couple of other big flags, too, including the fact that until they were committed, they lived at the Glam's Castle, which was the Queen Mother's ancestral seat. And one of Nerissa and Catherine's sisters joined Margaret in being a bridesmaid for Elizabeth's wedding to Philip, suggesting they likely knew about their cousins. Researchers have found one massive problem with researching Queen Elizabeth's cousins. There just isn't that much information out there, even for a team with the kind of access given to the researchers for the crown. Although they had the files that had belonged to Nerissa Bowes Lyon, her sister's files were missing, and what they found in them didn't really clarify things. She explained, Nerissa is diagnosed imbecile. That's the official term. Now, that doesn't kind of equate to anything today. We had to try to read through records to understand how they described any symptoms Mm -hmm. of this illness. Sulzberg said that they finally came to the conclusion that neither sister had physical disabilities, but determining exactly what they would be diagnosed with today proved next to impossible. There was also some contradictory information in the files too that made matters even more complicated when it came time to portray the sisters and cast them respectfully. For example, at the same time it was recorded that they recognized the royal family when they appeared on television, it was also claimed that they only recognized each other as family and were uncomfortable around others. The 1987 Thames News report said that the last record they have of a family member coming to visit the sisters was in the 1960s. Still, those who cared for them have shared some heartbreaking stories about their continued devotion to the family that forgot about them. In Channel 4's 2011 documentary, nurses described the recognition that came when they saw the royal family on television, with nurse Onel Braithwaite saying, If the queen or queen mum were ever on television, they'd curtsy. 
very regal, very low. Obviously, there was some sort of memory. It was so sad. Just think of the life they may have had. They were two lovely sisters. And another nurse, Dot Penfold, said, All the time they were there, so far as I was concerned, I didn't ever see anybody visit them. Never had birthday cards, never had Christmas cards, not when I was there. Around the time that the documentary aired, the Express claimed to have spoken rather off the record to sources close to those in Buckingham Palace. They said that Queen Elizabeth was upset at the idea her cousins had been ignored. It was further claimed that the sisters simply didn't understand who visited them, got upset at the presence of strangers, and regularly received Christmas presents. But that was the exact opposite of what former nurse Bridie Tingley had to say. At Christmas time, they never got a sausage. It's the 21st century, and the world's treatment of mental health concerns and learning disabilities is still far from perfect. But things have come a long way since a hospital that Nerissa and Catherine Bowes Lyon were sent to was opened in 1855, as the first ever built specifically for housing those diagnosed with learning disabilities. Still, good intentions only go so far, and in Channel 4's 2011 documentary, some of the nurses who worked there explained that they had been woefully overcrowded and understaffed. Only 125 pounds per year was paid for the care of the sisters, which may have contributed to the understaffing. Workers interviewed estimated that there were around two nurses to care for about 40 patients, leaving little time for one-on-one -on -one care. One explained, You gave them a bath, cut their nails, fed them if they needed help. One Surrey native recalled going to the hospital to visit her sister in the 1950s. She remembered it as a scary place. And I'd get that gripping feeling around my heart of dread. When the Royal Earlswood Hospital closed in 1997, one of the Queen's cousins, Catherine Bowes Lyon, was still living there. According to Esquire, the royal family was consulted about what was going to happen to her, and hospital administrator Peter Kinsey said that they were given the same considerations as other families of the hospital's patients. But Buckingham Palace never released a statement, and Catherine was transferred to another facility where she continued to live in obscurity and ultimately died almost two decades later. When Annie Sulzberger was trying to find more information on just what happened to Catherine for the Crown, she shared that Catherine had apparently been moved into a place that was more of a community setting instead of a hospital one. The paper trail basically ended there. We couldn't really track it down. I tried reaching out to a couple of the nurses who were on their ward, but understandably, I think that they were just a little reticent to speak, so we did the best we could with the information we had. Nerissa and Catherine Bowles Lyon were a secret for a long, long time, and it actually didn't stop there. It was ultimately revealed that there were three other cousins who had been similarly committed on precisely the same day as Nerissa and Catherine. Edonia Elizabeth, Rosemary Jane, and Ethaldradia Fabia Fane were also committed to the Royal Earlswood Hospital on that same day in 1941. The three sisters were the daughters of Nerissa and Catherine's Aunt Harriet. By the time this was publicly revealed in 1987, more than four decades later, Nerissa and Rosemary had already passed. In 2000, The Guardian publicly wondered why no one had really heard much from Princess Alice in the lead-up to her 99th birthday, and accused the royal family of having the tendency to hide away those who didn't fit the mold. They've been doing it, particularly with their children, for a long time. They cited the case of Prince John, who would have been Alice's brother-in-law, who was born in 1905, suffered an epileptic seizure in 1909, and was excluded from formal occasions that included his father's 1911 coronation. By the time he was nearing his teenage years, he was sequestered away in Sandringham, where he died in 1919. He hadn't seen his parents in several years. Nerissa Bowes Lyon died in 1986, a year before the Sun would make headlines with their investigation into the sisters' very existence. When she passed, she apparently got no more recognition than she had in life. She was buried in a pauper's grave in Red Hill, Surrey's Redstone Cemetery, one that was initially marked with a simple plastic stick. In Channel 4's documentary, some of the nurses who cared for the sisters talked about their experiences with them and at Nerissa's funeral. Nurse Shelia Rule said she was one of the only people there at Nerissa's graveside, and Bridie Tingley added, There was no connection with the royalty. That's no credit to them. They could have given her a very lavish funeral, but they didn't, and she had a pauper's grave. Catherine died in 2014, and she was also buried in Redstone. Her grave marker was a simple wooden cross, and it didn't go unnoticed. A petition on change.org has asked for the sisters to be given proper grave markers and to have their final resting places cared for, and Nerissa's grave has since been marked with a headstone. The tragic tale of Nerissa and Catherine Bowes Lyon got a lot of attention when they were featured in The Crown, and although the episode comes with a lot of embellishment, there is a kernel of truth there, too. Evidence points to the fact that, as portrayed in the show, the Queen Mother knew about the sisters from at least 1982. At the time she found out about them, she reportedly sent them money, which was used to buy candy and toys. What she didn't do was visit them, and with a more recent look at the whole messy, sad situation, it hasn't gone unnoticed that the Queen Mother was also a patron for the Royal Society for Mentally Handicapped Children and Adults. 
It's raised some uncomfortable questions about why she hadn't been bothered to set the record straight about her own family. Buckingham Palace has always been very mum on the sisters, in spite of still being patrons of the same charity. Now called Mencap, the royal family, Buckingham Palace, and the Countess of Wessex held a massive banquet in 2017 to commemorate 70 years of sponsorship. They said that Mencap has a long royal history and lauded a 1963 event in which Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, opened Mencap's new hostel and training workshop in Slough. By that time, the sisters were receiving their final ever visits from the family.